So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by a top trainer, my good friend, Billy Nelson. Billy, superb victory for your man, Martin Bacoli, on Saturday night over Jared Anderson. We'll get into the nuts and bolts of it in a minute. But you've been telling people for years now how good Martin is, who he can be. It's almost become a, you know, a stick that other people have used to beat you with. How satisfying is it for you that he's now proved how good he is on the world stage. Well, well, I'm delighted. I'm obviously I'm delighted, but people doubt you, and p people in the sport doubt you because mainly they're jealous. You know what it's like. There's a hell of a lot of jealousy in the sport, but uh, I'm so happy for Martin for 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 what he's uh, achieving. And we've not achieved nothing yet, by the way. We're only achieving the now. And uh, we'll go back to the gym in four or five weeks and start working on the next fight. And uh, I think we'll we'll be, we'll take a massive step closer to fighting for the world title in the next fight or two. But is there an element of kind of two fingers up to the critics? Because you you've often been the only voice saying how good Martin could be. And he's proved it to everyone now. Like, it seems like a lot of people maybe owe you an apology. So it is, isn't it? It's just the way it is. I'm not looking for an apology, but I'm, listen, I know my boxing and I know I know talent when I see it. You know, I mean, I, I, I think I've done, I've been relatively successful for the, the stables that I've had, the, the limited opportunities that I've been given. I think I've done really well. So, I mean, my jump. My gym's only had one defeat in six years, over six years. No many gyms in Britain can say that, can they? And given that legacy of achievement, you know, you took Ricky Burns, of course, to two world titles at different weights. How does Saturday night, the satisfaction of that victory, compare to some of the stuff of the past? With respect more, because I'm solely responsible for uh, Martin's career because I'm his manager as well with Ricky he had a, an excellent manager Alec Morrison mm. who, who who looked after him superbly well uh, but in, in, in Martin's case Martin came to this country an unknown he had the middle of a donut in his pocket uh, and he's came for you know I think, I think he was in £600 a fight or something like £700 to Becoming a very, very wealthy man now. Yeah, it's awesome. And it must be nice for the two of you as well, because you've got that bond with him that perhaps, you know, he lives near you as well. He doesn't, you know, he's come over to this country, didn't know anyone when he first came over. I know his family are, are with him now, but you two are very close, maybe more close than the general trainer-boxer relationship. Oh, very much so. He calls me, he calls me his second dad. You know what I mean? And we, we kid on, we go to hotels and that, that he's my brother, the different mum. <laughs> he's, he's a big funny guy, you know what I mean? It's just, it's all about a band, you know what I mean? But no, we're close, we're close. We speak about we speak about most things, as I do with most of my fighters, that, that are loyal and stay close to you, you know what I mean? You're there to help you. Yeah, I'm there to help him in any way I can. It's more so Martin because he's, like you say, he's for a, a, a foreign country, Came here with nothing. Came here uh, hoping and praying that he could achieve it, uh, his dreams. And we're getting very, very close to realising those dreams. And there's been a lot of ups and downs on the journey. I suppose the lowest point was the defeat to Michael Hunter years ago now. But when that happened, what gave you the faith that he would get to where he is now and, and even further? What? Why did you keep that trust in him? Because he told me the following morning what the issue was with the with, uh, with the Michael Hunt something happened in his something happened in his personal life on the Thursday, and it just played manifested in his his I mean, uh, his mind right through the fight the whole weekend. If he'd have told me on the Thursday, believe me, he'd have been he'd have been falling off a, a pavement in London, and the fight would have got cancelled. Uh, it is what it is. He's learned a very, very valuable, uh, valuable lesson that night, and he swore never to let something like that happen again. 
And, you know, people always, always, even six years on, they always judge him on that hunt of height. And I know that they shouldn't because he was looking magnificent leading up to that fight. And I knew after, in the second round, I knew there was something something wrong. I didn't know what, but I knew there was something wrong because it just was, he was getting hit with punches. I've never seen him get hit with so many punches in my life. I've never seen Martin Bacoli hurt, let alone hit with so many punches what he was with Hunter. And he still gave him a good fight. It's an interesting one because he rebuilt really well. I know you went over to Poland to beat Marius Vak over there, and that seemed like a breakthrough. But then he has been one of the more avoided fighters in world boxing over the last few years. What's changed now? Why do you think he got this opportunity against Jared Anderson when you were waiting so long for a chance like that? Plain and simple, Spencer Brown. He's been a godsend to Martin and myself. If it wasn't for Spencer Brown, I don't know where we'd be because we were getting, we weren't getting offered fights. We, we were a promoter. Uh, he, he freely admitted that uh, he wouldn't have been out to make the Jared Anderson fight, if, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't, that's no music to my ears hearing your promoter say that. But thankfully, uh, His Highness uh, T- Turkey Al Sheikh managed, uh, made the fight, and well, we're not in a position to say no, are we really? Tell us a little bit more about Spencer Brown's role because obviously HE, Turkey Adel Sheikh gets a lot of the credit. He's obviously the man with the money. But Spencer's the one behind the scenes putting all these things together. Uh, I think Spencer's uh, the man that Turkey Adel Sheikh trusts fully. You know, but he's got the utmost respect for Spencer because Spencer's a straight as die. Mm. You know, he'll call it the way it is. And if you don't like it, you know the doors never the doors never closed, and I, I like people uh, but like uh, uh, Peter Fury. Yeah, you know, and doesn't they bullshit him? Yeah, don't bullshit him. He doesn't bullshit me. The two is as straight as a die. But very honest people, and some people don't like that because there's so, so many pussies in boxing and so many ass lickers. It's unbelievable. And. There's been a lot of talk since the victory over Anderson about where Martin sits now in the world kind of rankings, if you like. Obviously, you're his manager and trainer, so you're not going to be completely unbiased. And you'll say he beats all of them. But based on his accomplishments, who he's beaten and how he's beaten them, where do you think he sits now in that side, top five or top ten? Well, given who who who, who he's beat, right? And I'm, I'm being honest, there's Fury and Usyk. Or Usyk and Fury. AJ are all above him. Daniel Dubois has got to be above him because he beat Hergovic and he's the IBF, he's been given the IBF. He's not a world champion, by the way. He's been given the title. You know, he's never held a world title above his head. So he's not a world champion. In my eyes, he's a email champion you know, until he beats until he beats AJ or otherwise. Uh, Joseph Parker, you've got to say he's a man in form. Caballal, and then possibly Martin. So, and, that's, and I think that's a fair assessment. Maybe, well, many was that, five or six? So it was six ahead Martin. of him, I think. Well, I think that's fair, but that not be fair. I agree, yeah. And and to climb that kind of ladder, he will obviously need to beat one or two of those in front of him, as you've said. Who out and of those know. six do you think is most likely that he'll end up fighting? I think you'll fight Zhang next because there's another fight made between a couple of the guys that I mentioned there. Yeah. So, well, you know, there's another fight get made, and hopefully, hopefully, if we if we do fight Zhang, then maybe the two winners can fight for a world title. When would that likely be? Is I know there's a another Saudi show in October. Is that too soon? Too soon because you got to be cut. We cut. So I think we're looking at December, I hope. What do you make of Zhang? Because obviously he looked decent in his last fight and then in the two back-to-back wins over Joe Joyce, but that was sandwiched by the Joseph Parker defeat. Well, how do you rank Zhang? What what do you make of him? I think Zhang's a very good fighter. I think he's like Martin. The bigger he is, the better he is. The bigger his opponent, the better he is. Because I think he struggles with smaller people. 
know, punching down the way and getting caught over the top like he did with Joe. Uh, but Martin's got, like Joe Parker, Martin, Martin's every bit as quick as Joe. He's got every bit as much movement as Joe when he chooses to use it. But Joe's not got Martin's power and work rate. And that, that'll be Zhang's downfall. And he can't, he can't, there's nothing at, at the age that he's at now. He won't change. You're not teaching old dog new tricks. He'll be the same Zhang. But we can change. If we need to. And assuming that happens and he gets past Zhang, would it be world title shot next, do you think? Like with the division the way it is? Well, you'd certainly hope so because you would, you, I would, I would think the WBO and, and well, I think I think Martin Mark will certainly take all of Gerard Anderson's uh, rankings. Rankings now, and some of them are four, some of them are five, I think one, seven. So Martin will be in the top five or six in all the organisations. So, and he's number one in the WBA. The WBA must be due after the Furiosic fight. So we maybe get, get a shot at that against somebody. Let's get your kind of views on how that is going to pan out, that situation at the top. You talked about Dubois' fight with AJ and, you know, he needs to win that to solidify himself as a legitimate world champion. Do you see him doing that or do you see AJ becoming, what, a three-time world champion? I think AJ will beat him. But it'll be a good fight because AJ's no fought any of this since, well, Usyk. He's no, you know, I mean, he can't, you know, he done what he should have done against the MMA guy. Uh, he's he beat the guy when a week's notice who failed the drugs test. Alenius, yeah. Uh, Alenius and who else did he beat there? Who did he, who did he beat the last fight? Was it Alenius? Now the last fight was Ngannou, and then uh, Alenius before that, wasn't it? And then I'm trying to remember. Oh, no, no, Alenius. Otto oh, Valen. Alenius, no. Who? Oscar beat Otto Valen as well, didn't he? Yeah. Who, who, who got beat against Sosolowski and never got a decision? Oh, yeah. I remember that fight. Yeah, I mean, so, look, at, I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking AJ, but his opponents haven't been of the highest quality, which may play into Daniel's hands. But, you know, if Daniel beat AJ, get him to come fight Mark Bacoli. Because I'll guarantee you won't. Frank Frank Warren said in an interview yesterday, they would take the fight with Martin Bacoli. No, they <laughs> won't. So no, Frank's, they won't. Uh, Frank's not being entirely honest there. I'm just telling you, you wouldn't take the fight. And if he does, he'll get he'll get what Anderson got, but quicker. I've always said they'll knock well knock him out within six rounds, no problem. Just too good for him. What about Joshua? Do you think he'd fight Martin if he comes out on top in September? Joshua's been offered the fight and they said no in Congo. So I'm so I'm told. Yeah. I mean, I suppose for Joshua, if he wins in September, he'll have more to lose at that point. Joshua will fight bigger fish. You know, Joshua's got... Oh, nobody wants to see their sixth third fight. Come on, he's 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 got he gets schooled in the two fights. You know, although he's slightly better on the second one, he still got beat handily enough. Uh, the fight every, the fight Joshua wants is Fury because it's massive in, in the UK. Hmm. But will Fury fight fight on if he lost to Usyk? I don't know. And it, even if he didn't. He'd be out the ring for a long, long time, and he'd he'd have a rest and a break. I mean, he could be out the ring for another eight, nine months, ten months. It could be next next November. That that the fight, because you know, it could be a year away, a, a year and a a year a year this Chris, uh, a year and Christmas that they, they may, it may be fit AJ. You know, because who wants to wait that long? Come and fight Martin Bacoli. Do you think Fury beats Usyk in the rematch? He's got the capabilities to beat anybody on the planet. Fury is an exceptional, exceptional fighter. Um, it all depends on his mindset, I think. I'm glad he's kept the same team. As long as each and every one of them know their role in the, in the corner. Yeah, I mean, who, who's who got to lay that law down about who's 
got which role? Is it Tyson himself? No, the coach. Nobody tells me what you're doing in my corner. Nobody. Like, but I, I have people... I've got Jamie Sheldon, who I think is the best cut man in the country. And a genuine, genuinely nice man. Yeah. Keeps his mouth shut. Does he does his job? He's got he's got approximately fifty seconds to work on Martin if need be. He's got fifty seconds. I let him do his job. He does my job. Um, just work, work together. But too many voices in the corners are bad, bad thing. It seems like quite a big challenge to get someone with the personality of Big John Fury to stay quiet between rounds when his son's in the thick of it. Listen, I've got all the time in the world for Big John. He's been nothing but a big gentleman to me when I'm when I go down to Morecambe and I've uh, been Big Martin for Spam. I'm not here to knock him, you know, but if 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 Sugar Sugar Hill is the main coach, he's got to respect that that. He's got to respect it. Because all it does is the boxer's sitting in the chair and he's hearing his dad there and he's hearing Sugar Hill. And if his dad's screaming in his ear there and talking over the coach, he think it, there's a nervous a, a nervous energy coming for his father. So in in the boxer's mind, whether it be Tyson, Joe Bloggs or, or whoever, the boxer thinks there's something wrong here, I'm doing something wrong, what am I doing wrong? And he's getting, you know, different voices and, and there was other voices as well coming in. You know, Andy was speaking as well. It, it was just it, it was wrong, but everybody means well, you know what I mean? That, Cause they're all good, good people. Andy Lee is a fantastic coach. John's a big gentleman, so he is a big cracking guy guy. And and Sugar Hill. I mean, me and I mean I, I went home I went home after the fight and sat uh, after the fight and sat, I went back to the hotel on Saturday and went out with the team just for something to eat. We went into this big bar in in, in Los, Los Angeles just to watch the Terence Crawford fight. Hmm. And who's sitting the next table? Sugar, Sugar Hill. <laughs> and and uh, it looked like I think he's certainly a man looked like his brother and a friend of his. And uh you know, we we know each other, we shook hands during the week, shook hands before and after the fight. Uh, but if he's the main man in the corner, that's exactly what he's got to be, the main man. And you mentioned sparring there. There was obviously lots and lots of stories, reports of Martin's prowess in sparring with some of these big guys and what he'd done to them. Do you think now, after what's happened against Jared Anderson, the public at large will now believe those stories? I don't care. Listen... As Martin says, Martin would rather have no mentioned about spawn things, about spawn stories. But he was getting nowhere fast, getting fights. So people asked him and they told me the truth. And it is the truth. I mean, but people have added bits on saying that we knocked out AJ. We never knocked out AJ. They're saying they knocked out Tyson. We never knocked out Tyson. Did they stop Daniel Bow? Yes, he did. Did they make him quit? Yes, he did. Did they break his nose? Yes, he did. Did they batter Joe Joyce? Yes, he did. Did Joe Joyce damage Martin with body shots and make him sick? No, he didn't. Because he was sick 20 minutes before the spa and every at the end of each and every round during the spa. Did they refuse to fight him on three separate occasions? Yes, he did. So stop talking shite and people should just admit things that happened are fact. No fiction, fact. You've clearly got a lot of respect for Fury and his capabilities, and I'm sure the same for AJ and Usyk. But are you confident enough in your man now that you'd put him in with any of them and you'd back him to win? A million percent. I want, you know, if if, if Usyk wins, Usyk wouldn't be keen on fighting Mark Bacoli. Usyk's, uh, I think he's his manager. Kilmus, Klimas, Kilmus. He is Klimas, yeah, he's his manager. I met him on Saturday night. He says he's an outstanding talent. He says he'll win the world title. And this was after the fight. He says, I told him all what was going to happen to Anderson. He says, he says, Bacoli has been in camp with us. He says, exceptional talent. I says, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people won quite a lot of money on Martin. I know that, you know, probably doesn't affect you, but 
the fact that he won by stoppage as well, I think, yeah, the odds were pretty good. I think half a green girls were on him at six or <laughs> one yeah. in the first five rounds. So he timed it well. He had a minute to go. He was teasing them all. Brilliant. That's great stuff. But yeah, have you got a, a preference between uh, Joshua, Fury, Usyk, if they're kind of established top three? No, this is the, listen, these are the guys that Martin wants to fight because they're the three best heavyweights out there. Of that, there's little doubt. Uh, we'll fight any of them. Any of them. Well, we shall see. Just moving on from Martin now, obviously you've got a thriving stable. We've talked about that before. What What's next for some of those guys, like Lewis Crocker, for example? I believe Crocker's next fight is going to get announced this week. Uh, uh, Sean Lazzarino will make his debut on the 4th of October, I think it is. Luke Bibby fights two weeks on Friday. He was over in uh, uh, Los Angeles with us. He got some excellent sparring in the Ten Guzman gym with a, an Olympian and a guy that won a, a, a World Championship medal. It was 10, 10 and 0 uh, as a professional and he done exceptionally well. See, for a four-fight a four fight novice, he, he's coming on leaps and bounds. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. And he's such a, a lovable guy. <laughs> see, see, after Martin stopped uh, Anderson, I looked over at them where my where my, my friends were in the crowd, and looked standing there, bawling his eyes out, greeting. So he was. <laughs> I said, "Sam, what were you greeting for?" Oh, he says, "I was just so happy for you," and I thought, "What a nice touch that was!" You know, that was yeah. that was class. That was up. Uh, oh, I got a wee bit emotional, so I didn't say that. <laughs> you just you don't expect that, yeah, boxer. But I mean, he was scarlet red with tears. And it was nice, you know, it means a lot. But he is a consummate professional, so he has running every day on uh, uh, Los Angeles. He's, and we went to the gym three or four days out of five, and he sparred twice. And he's he's a, a, a one I look forward to. Great stuff. And, and there might be, there might be a massive, massive signing from, no signing, but a guy coming to my gym. I got, I, got, I got asked over in Los Angeles about the possibility of him coming. Could, could you oh. give us any clues? To, no, you know, no, like I said, I wouldn't do it in case it didn't happen. Because if it didn't happen, you look like a bit of a fanny, didn't you? But <laughs> if, 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 if it happens, it happens. You know. I think people are going to start trusting a little bit more when you say things now after the win at the weekend. I don't think people doubt you quite so much. No, no reason to doubt me in, in the first instance. But oh, no, I, but, you know, it's not. It's not so doubt. It's the as people. People maybe don't want to believe, or are jealous. Money too, and and the jealousy aspect in our sport, Danny, is fucking ridiculous. People are nice to you. You're, not not me personally. I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. People are nice to people with a face and they talk about buying a bike. Fucking wankers. Well, I'm delighted for you, I've got to say. I mean, he's obviously I'm happy for Martin for, as well, but just for I've you and how much time. time you've put in with him. I've known you for a long, long time, and you're a genuine big guy. Thank you, mate. But yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for you. I think a lot of people are. Sam Jones seems to have become like your biggest fan now, which is a I'm fun gonna, development. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, get in touch with Amazon today and... and, and Send him a new telly because I heard his foot went through the one on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still got his phone, unfortunately. But, oh, uh, I know. It's attached to his ear. <laughs> I'm aware. Yeah. Billy, really appreciate it, mate. Uh, you go and get yeah. some well deserved sleep. Uh, Rita, thank you for putting up with him and, <laughs> and for letting him do the interviews and stuff. Uh, but yeah, well done, mate. And uh, yeah, let's uh, catch up again soon. All the best, Danny. Thank you. Take care, mate. Bye-bye.